All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Fixing Focus. The series where you and I are going to take this 2008 Ford Focus SES and make it the best possible version of itself. In this first ever episode, we are doing a total upgrade and replacement and really just a rejuvenation of all of the lighting on this car. From finishing out the LED conversion on the rear to all new headlights and fog lights, which are in these big old boxes right here. And yeah, we really do need some headlights and fog lights. So without further ado, let's get right into it. However, before we do get right into it, a quick disclaimer. I'm an 18 year old kid. This is my first car and every video I make as part of this series or really any video where I'm working on this car, I'm just making because I like my car and I like working on it and I like seeing it get better and better over time. So anything that I say or do is not pure fact. I'm not a professional, I'm not a mechanic or anything like that at all. So if you see something that I do and you like, man, I want to do that to my car. Don't take what I say as fact. Just keep that in mind because you might not get the same results that I do. But with that, let's actually get right into it. And get right into it, we shall. Starting with getting rid of these old, damaged, dirty headlights. Now these headlights are not as yellow as they were when I got this car in July of last year. I actually did a full restoration on them, sandpapering everything down smooth and hazy, and then compounding and then polishing them, using a special sealant on the outside to keep them looking okay. And they actually do look all right, considering that this car has been outside for pretty much all of its 16 years and 200,000 miles on the road. But with all that sun damage and all that time of stuff flying off the road and hitting the glass or plastic, it just gets damaged deep down inside of there. And I could sand this all day and night and still not get out all of those imperfections. So it's time for new headlights. And a similar story with the fog lights. This glass lens still looks okay, but it's permanently dirty and damaged. It's just scratched to hell and back. And then this one, well, there's no glass to speak of. And what glass there is, is all cracked and destroyed. So definitely well overdue for new lighting up here. And then as for the rear, as you can tell, I've already done an LED conversion on these rear taillights. And that's because about five months ago, I was driving with some friends. And let's just say that this taillight decided it didn't want to be red anymore. This red lens fell off on the highway. I don't know exactly when, and I did not ever find it. So I had to basically emergency buy these headlights that I was going to buy for this episode five months ago. <laughs> so that kind of tells you how slow I move. But now I'm going to install LED reverse lights and LED license plate lights to really give this car a clean, modern look. And on the note of bulbs, I'm not going to be doing an LED conversion up front, save for the turn signals slash DRLs. We are going LED for those so that they have that nice crisp blink, blink, blink versus a blink, blink, blink. And my DRL would be a little bit brighter, which I think will look nice. And again, so excited for these fog lights. But of course, to actually do all of this, we have to take out the headlights and the fog lights. And to do that, I've got to get some tools. And pretty impressively, all of the stuff that we're going to do today is really simple. You just need basic hand tools for these taillights when I take them out to replace the bulbs. You just got to get back here past this piece of plastic. There's some deep socket, or you can use a wrench to just undo that. And then for this, or for up front, all we need is a socket set to get everything going. Now here's something funny. This is my big old, I don't want to say professional, but my big old 3 8 inch drive tool set. And I'm missing my 10 millimeter. And I'm pretty sure that for this job, we are going to need a 10 millimeter. But really just get some cheap ratchet set. I think this was like $12 at Walmart, maybe $7. It was crazy cheap. But this is all you need to get this whole job done. Minus, of course, the taillights, which you're going to need a deep socket for. But we'll get to that when we get to that. And to start the procedure, I'm going to actually take off these headlights first. And normally, you would undo all of these bolts here, there, and there. And then you would take this off and blah, blah, blah. 
but you might notice that because these headlights are so old and brittle and the plastic has shrunken and all that, <laughs> the bolts are not actually holding the lights onto the rest of the car. But luckily there is some stuff right here with the grill and some um, clips under there that are holding everything in. So <laughs> they're not liable to fall out, but it's just kind of a funny thing. Anyways, to get these out, we actually do need a flathead screwdriver. And I will just use the flathead part of my multi-tool. And I'm going to show you really quickly how to take these uh, plastic clips off without damaging them. Because you can get like 240 of them on eBay for like $5, whatever. But I just don't want to have to go buy some. So I'm going to show you how to take these off really simple and easy. So just take it under there and turn it. Stick it in, turn it, and it's the same procedure for all four of them. And now, and with all of these popped loose, we can take out the plastic part, or the insert, I should say. Just comes out nice and easily like so, and you can see the clip part actually comes out with it sometimes. And I'm just going to set these somewhere on top of the car up here by the glass. And now... I can take my screwdriver again, or whatever you've got that's similar in shape, and just stick it in and twist it. It's an easy procedure, and honestly, you have to kind of be trying to break these things. I mean, these are the original ones that came on the car, 16-year-old plastic, and if I'm not breaking them, then you won't either. But again, it's just about being pretty careful. <clears throat> there you go. Now, to actually take off this grill so that we can remove the headlights, it's a little bit of a finicky process, but you basically just go here, there's some plastic clips, pop those, and then, depending on how yours is attached to the car, you're going to have some bolts in there, right there and right there, but as you can see, mine are just totally missing. Not a surprise on this old car, but once you get those bulbs bolts removed. There are some plastic clips right here. These ones correspond to these two on the grill and it kind of slides in there when you go to replace it. But to get it off you just kind of pull real hard and it'll come right out. Don't try to bend it up or bend it down. You'll break these. Again, 16 year old plastic. But now we get to set this to the side and what you'll see is that there are bolts on either side of the bulb and you can see the Black plastic is supposed to be attaching this, but of course on mine it's not, so I don't have to take these bolts out. Although I guess I will since I'm installing new headlights. <laughs> but on your car, take out those bolts and you'll be good to go. And yes, they are 10 millimeter. And now, as to removing the headlight itself, it's kind of simple. You just come in here and you pull. That pops out. And mine was pretty easy because uh, the clip down here is pretty messed up. But uh, this metal is supposed to be kind of close together, and then it goes in that hole right there, and it kind of clips in. But again, mine's all worn out, so it's not really a big deal. When you do it, you'll have to pull a little more and wiggle a little more, but that clip will just, you know, pop on out. And it's the same procedure for the other light right on over here. Although you can see I was messing with this earlier, and I kind of put this on goofy. Uh, but pops right out, and we're good to go. Now, when it comes to uh, this headlight over here, you probably saw um, this one was nicely aligned with the body panels, and this one wasn't. That's just because, like this one over here, the spring clip on the back or on the bottom is pretty messed up and damaged, so it doesn't really clip in anymore. But last time I had to change out these turn signal bulbs, they were just, uh, well, took it out, put it back in, and then the clip was damaged, so... Just keep that in mind when we go to put the new lights in, or if you were doing this at home, be really careful with those metal clips because once they bend, they are bent. But now, as for uh, taking out these old housings, all we have to do is disconnect the connectors. Now, um, normally if you were changing the bulb, all you would do is um, twist this and pull it out. But since we are dealing with the connectors themselves, you just push this in right here. And that comes right... Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. I hope I don't need that piece. <laughs> Anyways, it's a similar process for the rest of them. Push a clip. 
and pull it out. And then over here, I kind of see a clip, but I don't see how I'm going to pull it out. And I'm done struggling with the side marker bulb. Turns out um, you don't really remove, remove this connector. You just kind of pull the bulb out, and it, or you just kind of turn counterclockwise and pull this out. Even though on the new headlight lens, there's actually just this whole housing minus the connector. And I'm assuming that right here there's supposed to be some clip that I push so I can pull the connector out. But I'm not going to mess with that because if it was there, it's broken. And if it is there and I'm just not seeing how to take this out, I'm probably going to end up breaking it. And I really don't want to break this. So I will just pull this little bulb straight out. And then I can bum the one from the new housing. And now it's the same process as the previous headlight. I'm just going to find this connector here. Pull this out. There we go. And that thing broke again too, so maybe I don't need it. <laughs> and then here's this connector. Pull it out. That did good. And then turn this counterclockwise. And that comes right out. And then the housing is free, ready for the new one. And speaking of the new headlight lenses, there is the driver's side one. And you can just see the difference like night and day. It is absolutely unreal. I thought that lens looked okay when I had restored it. Well, evidently not. <laughs> I am so, so happy that we're finally getting this done. And if you look closely, you can see that the new lenses actually have bulbs pre-installed, which for $155, including shipping and tax, and shipping was free, I don't know why I said that, but $155 for the pair, and they come with bulbs, I'm so happy. That is super duper cool and very awesome. Probably not going to use them, especially the turn signals, but, you know, it's nice to have. And speaking of the turn signals, here's what we got. So these are from a company called Last Fit. Uh, these are just some LED non-switchback um, pure amber LED bulbs, and they're going to go right there in the turn signals slash DRLs. And I've already checked and confirmed they do work. No hyper flashing or anything like that. So I am so excited. Let's get these installed before I have a stroke. Okay, so I've gone ahead and tested both of my LED turn signals and they work just as expected. So now what I'm going to do, um, I didn't do it on the other one because I had opened it up just to make sure everything looked alright, and it does. But we're going to do a peel of the plastic on the lens. <laughs> and now it's time to install the bait. Now these headlights do come, like I said earlier, with all of the other bulbs. So right now I'm not going to worry about transferring bulbs from the old housing to these new ones. Um, especially not even the headlights, because I don't really. I think I think the other lenses actually have like like the stock headlights in the car are just you know some Sylvania long life generic replacements. Oh. Yeah, that clip is definitely broken, but it still works, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so now we're going to plug everything back in. So, oh, I need to turn that counterclockwise and take this bulb out. Wiggle it guy a little bit. And then I'm going to reuse this housing just because I'm afraid of messing it up. And I don't think these bulbs are pol polarized, so it shouldn't be a big deal to just... Put them in there, right? Yeah, let's. I uh, see. I see the connectors. So I guess I guess they are technically polarized. Gosh, I really don't like installing that. It feels like it's gonna shatter in my hand. But um, now I can pop that in. Let's see here. Just twist it around until it wants to fall into place. 
Come on, little honey. Well, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and struggle with this, and I'll um, install all the connectors on this one, and then we'll do the same for the other headlight over there, and then we'll move on to the fog lights. And now I've got the new headlight installed. It looks so much cleaner in real life than it does on camera. I guess that's just a matter of reflections. But now I'm going to quickly test everything and make sure it works. You guys let me know if it does. Did it work? And after rewatching the footage, it does work. So now it's time to put this one in. Everything looks good. Um, I'm gonna test this side marker bulb real quick. Just to make sure that everything's working. And yes, it is bright and beautiful. Looks great. So now it's time to go ahead and get this actually clipped and bolted into place. So first I'm gonna undo all of these bolts that are on there right now because remember we didn't have to undo them earlier to delete the old headlights but now that we've got the new ones in we do so let's just take these out real quick there's one and you're going to notice these have lots of washers on them and that's just because you know over time when mom had the car before i did she or some mechanic or whoever maybe even dad um put all these washers on there because this plastic started cracking and you know they wanted more surface area for the bolt to grip and there should be a bolt down here for this part of the headlight but it's <laughs> not there so again not worried about that you know it's fixed or repaired daily not a good deal but now we're gonna set this into place and i think it's going to seat by itself. Yep, sounds like that plastic has clipped. Yep, looks like it's there. <laughs> looks so good. So now we're going to do that with the other one, and I'll get back and I'll show you the results. Okay, so something real quick. I'm sure this is a mistake that happens all the time, and I want y'all to prevent it. Um, but one reason why these um, supporting parts crack on the headlights is because the bolts are over tightened. That's one reason why these washers are there from the factory is to spread out the force. But you'll note that they're tight enough when you're turning it and it just barely starts to resist your turning. That's the moment that you stop. Don't go any tighter than that or you'll risk damaging your brand new headlight. And I really don't want to do that. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, let me show you how the new headlights look now that they're fully installed. Oh, yes. These look incredible. Very clean and clear. They, oh, they just look so good. I only wish that the paint on the rest of this car looked as good. It's mostly just dirty from the rain and dust on these dirt roads, but also uh, this front bumper definitely needs some paint correction. But now that the headlights are done, it's time to focus on the fog lights. And replacing the fog lights should be relatively easy. I have the new units uh, right here. I've got two of them, of course. And apparently, all you need to do to replace these is pull on this plastic here. Oh, this feels so wrong. Ah. You can tell my front bumper <laughs> needs to be replaced in the near future as well. Ugh. But you should just pull on that and... Yeah, feels like it's coming on, off. There we go. And then apparently you can just leave this kind of like a book so that you don't have to take it off all the way. Uh, here's the metal ring. And I can confirm that, no, that's plastic, I think. I think that's plastic. It looks like metal though. Maybe it is metal, like aluminum or something. Anyways, you can see how dirty, dusty, nasty that headlight, that lens is. So I'm gonna take a seven millimeter, so 10, nine, eight, seven. Pop that on my tool here. And I will show y'all the bolts that are in here. Just quickly, you can see just some small seven millimeters. And we're gonna just remove all those and replace the fog lights. It's a super simple and easy procedure. 
Make sure I'm not tightening. There we go. There we go. And some suggest that you use a magnet tool for this um, to extract the bolts. I'm not particularly worried about that. We're just gonna remove the bolts and I can take them out with my fingers. Okay, so real quick, I thought I would show you all the funny thing that I'm doing with these bolts. So a lot of people um, I see when they take the fog light housing out, they pull this back and then they stick their tool through there. I'm actually just gonna stick my tool uh, through the hole and works pretty well. So now all four of the bolts have been removed. So I should just be able to pull this on out. And you can see it doesn't really come very far. So what I'm gonna have to do now is go underneath the car and just uh, detach the bulb and harness. So here I go. Let's see if I can do this without looking at it. Nope, I cannot. I'm gonna have to move the camera. Okay, so I've gotten under the car and gotten really nasty on that dirty rug and, <laughs> and concrete. But here is the bulb. And actually, it looks totally fine, which is concerning because when I have the fog lights on, um, this one doesn't work. It used to work, but it doesn't work anymore. So, I mean, I'm looking real close and it, it just looks totally fine to me. So that's kind of a shame. But then here is the old housing and you can see it is just absolutely cooked. I could probably scrub this for hours and all that, all that haze would still be there. So I'm really happy to be installing my new housings. And they have the bulbs pre-installed and look how clean that is. Ah, perfection. But now I'm gonna go ahead and install these just reverse order. Pop them in from the back, or actually you know, just pop them in from the front since the light is already there. Just pop them in, screw them in, turn on the light, and hope that everything works. And it should go without saying, but you are going to have to remove the splash guard underneath the bumper. Uh, mine may or may not have been removed by the road. That's a long story for another time, but it's also the reason why that fog light is broken. Anyways, uh, yeah, you'll have to remove the splash guard. It's just a bunch of bolts, easy peasy, and then you can get to the fog lights. Okay, so I've got some bad news. When I turn this switch, you can see my lights come on. And when I pull it out, there's a little light there that should come on to let me know that the fog lights are working. If not, it almost certainly means that the fuse is blown. And unfortunately, uh, this car's fuse puller, which should be located in the fuse box right there in front of the battery, uh, is missing. So I'm about to go to the store uh, to get some stuff. And I'm going to see if I can find a fuse puller. I'm not anywhere close to Walmart right now, so probably won't be able to get one. And if not, I can live without fog lights until I can get back to the city and you know, maybe go to Walmart and find a fuse puller. But that's the state we're in right now. And as soon as I'm done and song the other fog light, I'll show you all the results. All right, so as you can see, we've got the new fog light lenses installed. And I think they look way better than they did before. They're nice and clean and shiny. Take a look at that. And although they currently don't work, again, I'm assuming because of that fuse. In fact, I kind of remember driving. And, you know, I had installed a bulb in this one even without the lens. And, of course, less than a week later, it gets hit by a rock and my fog lights go out. But, um... I can't remember if it was not long after that that this one stopped working as well or if they both stopped working and I couldn't get them to turn on. Either way, I'm assuming that that blowing up probably had something to do um, with why they don't work right now and I'm assuming it blew a fuse. Anyways, as you can see, the front end is done. I just got to give her a bit of a bath, make her look pretty good. But then we will be good, at least up front. But now for the back... You can see my LEDs here, but again, my reverse light is not LED and my license plate light is not LED. And I just think that having full LEDs is gonna look so, so good. So let's do that next. All right. So what has been a couple of seconds for you guys has been for me a couple of days, a couple of very 
anxious days. Because I did all of the front end lighting on, I think it was Saturday, maybe Sunday. No, I know it was Saturday. And as you can see, looks incredible. I absolutely love how this turned out. This car looks almost brand new. Cannot wait to restore this front bumper and eventually get it replaced, but that's for another time. Anyways, now it's time to work on the back lighting, replacing these reverse bulbs with LED and replacing these license plate lights with LED. And to do so, I've got the bulbs right here. Now you can see I have three different packages even though I'm only doing two different projects. And that's because I ordered these side marker lights even though, um, well, I ordered them because I thought that these headlights did not come with bulbs. Needless to say, they did, as you already know. The bulbs are excellent. The side marker bulbs are nice and bright. The headlights are surprisingly great, especially now that they're aimed properly. They throw light really far and they do a great job. Again, car looks amazing. Anyways, for the LED upgrade, here's what we've got. So first, I have these last fit LEDs for the reverse bulbs. Uh, these are the same brand that I used up front for the turn signals. And then I have these unnamed brand uh, for the license plate lights. And I will put the brand on screen. I got them from Amazon. But now, with all of that out of the way, let me show you how we're going to get this done. So if you, um, again, if you're following along at home, Remember, I'm not a professional, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, my focus is probably a little bit different than yours because <laughs> um, this, all this plastic, this piece, and this piece on either side needs to come off. Now you can see I've already gotten this piece kind of off a little bit, but for you, you're gonna have to deal with some screws. There's gonna be screws kind of in here and in here, just on the other sides. And then I believe there's a screw there on each side as well. Um, I don't have those screws. They weren't there when I got the car. <laughs> so mine's a little bit easier to take apart and everything's held in by spring clips anyway. So no big deal. Let's get it disassembled. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna remove this middle panel here. And again, you'll have to take out some screws about there and there. And then it's just a bunch of clips and it kind of just pops right out. Don't worry about breaking these clips. They are metal. As you can see, there's three of them. I'm gonna set this to the side. And now I'll set y'all in here and we can get this off. So again, screw right there. You're gonna wanna take this off and be a little more careful. I can't remember if these clips are plastic or metal, but you'll just pry a little bit. There you go. And yep, metal clip there. Er, no, that's plastic, they're all plastic. So plastic clips there and then moving around. We will get this one done. So as you can see, it's a little bit loose already and it's just gonna pull out right like that. There are the clips. This one's a little bit damaged, not a big deal. Anyways, now, and now here comes the fun part where we get to use a deep socket set. This is just a quarter inch drive and I'm gonna use my uh, good old quarter inch ratchet from Walmart. And there are some bolts. Let's get y'all in here so you can take a look. So you can see there is a bolt in there, and then there is another bolt that's exposed on a uh, thread right there. So now all that we've got to do is figure out what the right size is for this. So I'm going to start at 10 millimeters. That seems pretty reasonable. Nope, not even close. I'll go to my largest of 13, because Ford loves 13 millimeters for some reason. And that's a little big. So is it 12 millimeters? Let's see. And looks like it. So uh, these are not the deepest deep socket um, tools that um, you can have. You see here, right? In fact, I'm gonna take my extension off so that I can get to this stud a little better. And you can see that my tool just barely reaches and I've already gotten it um, hand tight. So all I'm gonna do is put this on there and then just loosen it a good bit. And there we go. Don't lo lose these bolts. That's number one. And then hopefully the second bolt is also 12 millimeters. Yep, it is. So now we just break that loose and once we do I can unscrew it a while 
And uh, this is just a helpful trick. You don't have to do this if you don't have the um, correct tool, but in my wonderful box of wonders here in the trunk, I have this magnet tool. And all I'm gonna do is stick it in there and see if I can get the bolt off. Let me get in there a little more. Okay, here's the magnet. Oh, come on now. Leave this place. <laughs> Seems like it's just getting tighter. Hey, come back. Ah, goodness gracious. Anyways, that bolt is really loose. I don't know why it doesn't want to come out. All right, and with a bit of persuasion, all I had to do was kind of use my finger, get it in here, and then just uh, <laughs> loosen the bolt a little bit. And then that let me pull the light fixture out. So now to actually replace this reverse bulb, you turn the little housing counterclockwise and then the bulb comes right out. And with the bulb pulled straight out of the housing, you can see they look very similar in terms of how they go in. And this one looks uh, pretty good and burnt up. So definitely uh, glad that we've got these new ones because who knows, those could have gone out at any time. And then I get pulled over trying to back out of a parking lot with no reverse lights on. And now uh, installation is the same as uh, removal. The light just goes in there and because I'm holding the camera I can't really push at the same time so I'll just do it real quick. And after uh, <laughs> jabbing with a slightly concerning amount of force we do have the bulb in there. So let's quickly make sure the parking brake is engaged. I'm going to shift the car into reverse by putting my key in the ignition and turning to the on position. Reverse. Make sure parking brake is on. And now let's take a look, and yes, it works. That's gonna look so good once everything's put back together. So now I'm gonna repeat this whole process on that side over there, and then we can get started on the license plate lights. Okay, so real quick, um, while I'm doing this second tail light, um, that magnet tool I mentioned earlier wasn't really useful on this tail light because I was able to just pull the housing out and the bolt kind of just popped onto the ground there, or the trunk, whatever, anyways. Um, I managed to get my finger in there just like last time for this bolt and you can see, or I guess nut, it's right there on the edge and it could fall behind this uh, piece of metal here and I do not want that to happen, don't know where it would go, how I'd find it. So now I'm going to use that magnet tool, oh come on now, and there we go. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're worried about losing bolts and stuff like that. And another thing while I'm putting the taillights back in, um, you're going to see this white piece of plastic. It might be a different color on your car, but that's going to correspond to uh, this channel right here. Just make sure that as you're aligning these posts, you're also aligning this channel with that um, kind of aligning pin. And that just makes sure that the lights stay as flush as possible with the rest of the car. And now we have the wonderful new reverse bulbs installed. They do look a tiny bit odd there in the housings, and I'm not really sure how they ended up. Uh, this one's turned and that one not. They both went into the housing and I both turned them, I turned them both clockwise to seat them. But I mean, they're both in there solid is what I'm saying. <laughs> Just the wonders and joys of the aftermarket of a 2008 economy car. Anyways, reverse. And let's take a look at these reverse lights and those are bright and beautiful. I gotta clean these housings off. I've gotten a bit of dirt on them, but oh, <laughs> let me turn on the rest of the lights. And that just looks absolutely incredible. Way more modern, way nicer. This looks like an almost expensive car now. But now it's time to replace these license plate light bulbs. And you can tell they're actually pretty dim. I'm sure that these are the original ones with the car. 
and replacing them is actually really simple. The only tool that you need is a Phillips head screwdriver. And I did have one. I have no idea where I put it. I guess I lost it at the house or something. But I do have my trusty heart multi-tool. So I'm just gonna unscrew the two Phillips head screws in each assembly and they should pop right on out. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten the Phillips head screws removed. So I'll just finish taking them out and I'll leave them right here on the concrete because I'm sure they won't blend in and I, and I won't lose them. <laughs> Anyways, with these removed, I should now be able to take some sort of flat tool and just, oh my God, those are disgusting. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, this has never been done. But uh, I'm gonna quickly just pry these out of the, oh, I see the uh, pry hole now. Can't really do this with one hand, but I'm gonna pry these out and we'll get the bubbles replaced. Um, and it turns out I was wrong. I just looked back at the owner's manual and you actually just remove the lens. So. The lens comes out with a little bit of prying. <laughs> there it goes. There's the little bitty bulb. And wow, that thing looks like it's close to being burnt out. So glad we're getting these replaced as well. So I'm gonna quickly take these out and then I'll show you the process of putting the new bulbs in. All right, so here we have the old lamps versus the new LEDs. And I'm gonna be kind of quick because it is starting to sprinkle on me. Um, but real quick, I'm gonna take these out. You just pull them straight out and then pop those in place. And there we have it. LEDs are uh, into the housings. I did have to kind of pull on these tabs a little bit to seat them in and then blah, blah, blah. But there they are. Make sure those are kind of aimed a little bit. And now we're gonna insert them the way I took them out. And then we'll see how good they look. And uh, real quick, just a little mistake that I realized I made. Um, the bottom of the, or the, I guess the light outputting part of the bulb needs to actually face the lens. <laughs> so what I had before was wrong. The heat sink goes on the outside. Just thought I should note that. And now let's get them installed. And now I have the lights in place. I haven't screwed them in because you gotta make sure that the bulbs work. So let's go do that real quick. This time I don't have to put the car into reverse. Open the door, turn a switch, and moment of truth. Ta-da, they work. And it looks like one is a little brighter than the other. Not the bulbs themselves, just the housings are kind of messed up. So I might maybe one of these days get new housings. Not super worried about it, but this housing is definitely in better condition than this housing, which is all cracked and absolutely filthy and yellow. Not a big deal, just something to note. But now I'm gonna get these screwed in and then we'll finish off the video with the tour at nighttime of all of this beautiful lighting. All right, everyone. So uh, real quick, apologies about the audio quality if it gets a little worse. Um, I don't have my microphone on me right now. But in just a second, I'm going to show you how all of the new lighting on the Focus looks. But first, here's a look at the car without any of the lighting on. See, just looks regular, I guess. <laughs> Here she is in the back, looking totally regular and normal. And now, with all of the lighting turned on, you can see here are those beautiful new headlights and fog lights looking absolutely awesome. just looks incredible you can see the side marker lights look great as well here are those led tail lights that i haven't had installed for a couple of months here are the led license plate bulbs they are very bright they cast a really strong shadow there or really strong light i should say opposite of a shadow they look awesome but now for the reverse lights and you can see they cast an incredible amount of light out of the back of the car. My camera can't even comprehend this. We'll get right up in there and see if you can see, yes, that beautiful LED doing its job. So here she is. If someone comes up behind me and I want them to back off, I think I've got the tools to do it now. <laughs> Now, real quick, I just want to talk about why I did the um, LED in the rear, but not in the front. So, um, actually, in the rear, I like the LED taillights. They look really good, really nice and modern. Um, LED reverse lamps, only because of, um, just so I can see, you know, this car doesn't have a backup camera. So, being able to see safely and having lots of light behind me when I'm backing up at nighttime is really important to me. So, that's just a safety thing. And then, finally for the wonderful license plate lamp. 
Um, I just wanted that to be white because it's nice and modern and I think it looks good. And then moving up to the front, I didn't do any LEDs up here except of course for the DRLs slash turn signal. Reason being of course that I really love that crisp bright look of an LED. I think it looks incredible. It really modernizes this car a lot. But also just the crispness of it. The boop, boop, boop versus like kind of the slow laziness of a halogen bulb. But also I just think the color is a little bit better. The crispness of the light is a little bit better. And it just makes this car look a little bit nicer and a little bit better. And as for no LED headlights or side marker bulbs or fog lights, I just don't think that LEDs you know, a full LED conversion on the front looks right on this car. I have seen other Focuses that look amazing with LEDs. I just don't think this one's gonna look right though. You know, I've seen this car with halogens all of my life, all 16 years we've had this car. So it just doesn't make sense to me to have, you know, um, LEDs up front, but LEDs in the rear, they look awesome. Here's what you would see if you were behind us at a traffic light. And man, does this old girl ever look good. But with that, it is now time to conclude this first ever episode of Fixing Focus. And to conclude, here is my not-so-beautiful face. I much prefer the face on Perfect here. But you know what? I'm thankful regardless. I'm so thankful that you guys decided to click in to watch this video. I know it's going to be long, well over 30 minutes of Ford Focus content. But I just love this car. I love working on this car. And... I'm just so excited to take her to the next level in terms of getting her back to that stock look, that high quality, fresh out of the factory look to an extent, of course, but also like we did today with that kind of full stock plus mission where we upgraded to LEDs that still look good. You know, not the ridiculous custom garbage, just stuff that looks, you know, might, like it might have come for the factory, but on a more expensive car, if that makes sense. So I think overall, awesome job we did today. And again, thank you all so much for watching the first ever episode of Fixing Focus. Have a great night. It's Philip Thomas.